Dear friends, welcome to my YouTube channel BioZ Classes. So today again we are going to discuss one more very interesting topic based on human health and disease. So in this chapter particularly I am going to deal about two important topics that is health and types of diseases. So we all know what actually health is in general terms. When we take that into consideration, it is derived from Proto-Indo-European roads, Kylo. So which actually means something which is uninjured or something which is of good omen. When we talk specifically with respect to health, we talk about World Health Organization. So World Health Organization defines health as a complete state of physical, mental and social well-being of an individual and not merely an absence of disease or infirmity. So it is stressing on not only the absence of disease or infirmity, a person may not have disease in long run. But he is not you know, said to be a healthy person unless and until he satisfies the protocols of the World Health Organization pertaining to physical health, mental health, social health. Let me tell you first physical health. So it is a health which is due to regular physical activities which is which in fact which also includes adequate amount of sleep, uh, knowledge about good uh, uh, what I mean, human health, responsible sexual behavior, abstaining from alcohol and drug abuse, all these factors contribute for good physical health. Secondly, we have mental health. So, a person should have control over his or her uh, own abilities. Then definitely he is said to be a mentally healthy person. So, particularly here two important aspects are taken into consideration. One is cognitive and the second one is emotional well-being. When I say cognitive, it is a mental process of perception, memory and reasoning. Emotional well-being particularly a person should have control over his or her emotions. So, moving ahead, we have social what again health also here so that means to say a person should have healthy interactions with his own environment he should uh, fruitfully and productively contribute for the success of his community or society he should uh, be or she should be able to cope with the normal stresses of life so if uh, he or she satisfied or satisfies all these factors then definitely uh, he or she uh, is said to be a healthy person according to World Health Organization. So, other than this, my dear friends, it is also important to note that the environment where we live, the state of our environment, our income, our education, genetics, the relationship uh, what we have with our own family and uh, friends definitely matters that what type of health we possess whether healthy or unhealthy. Definitely if all the interactions are positive, then we are going to have a very healthy life. So overall we can put across uh, health, uh, you know, according to World Health Organization as uh, any person who has uh, physical, mental, social, intellectual, occupational, spiritual control over his or over, I mean, her abilities in all aspects, then definitely that person is healthy. My dear friends, here are few important aspects are there which we need uh, to be, you know, considering when we talk about uh, diseases. So, if a person is not, you know, having satisfaction with respect to all the above set factors, if he or she, let us say, has functional or structural disorder or any abnormality with respect to 
uh, the bodily functions that might be metabolic or that might be physiological or that might be any bodily harm, then here she is said to possess a disease. So now, when we particularly talk about the disease, it becomes highly critical to understand that what is a pathogen. A pathogen is an organism which causes a disease. So now, my dear friends, let us discuss about the types of diseases. So, types of diseases, in fact, we have, we can classify based on origin, symptoms, mode of transmission and in many other ways. But in general, we can classify them into three types. The first one is communicable diseases or infectious diseases. Secondly, we have non-communicable or non-infectious diseases. Thirdly, congenital or hereditary diseases. So now, let me tell you my dear friends, the first one, communicable diseases means here, it is these are the types of diseases which are not confined to a particular person but spreads from one person to the other person. So, irrespective of whatever, so those type of diseases are referred to as communicable or infectious diseases. Now, my dear friends, let me tell you that these communicable diseases or infectious diseases further can be classified based on the causative agents. Say, Bacterial diseases, viral diseases, fungal diseases, protozoal diseases, and helminth diseases. Okay. Now, when we talk about the bacterial diseases, my dear friends, let me give you a few examples. Say, for example, we have typhoid, which is caused by Salmonella typhi. Okay, this is typhoid. We have cholera caused by Vibrio cholerae. We have the what I can say here, tuberculosis caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Further, if I want to give you a few more examples, whooping cough caused by bot pertussis. We have, let us say, syphilis caused by triponema pallidum. Triponema pallidum. Gonaria caused by Nidaria gonariae. So these are few examples for bacterial diseases. Let us say for example, if we consider viral diseases, we have hepatitis, HIV, uh, what is the measles, dengue, uh, we have rabies and many other diseases. Okay. So, uh, protozoan diseases, if I want to bring here again, protozoan diseases are of, also are of you know, various uh, types. But the best examples which I can bring here is Kala Azar. We have uh, sleeping sickness, everyone knows this is a disorder which is caused by, okay, um, uh, what I can say, trypanosoma, Gambiense. So, this is one more very important disease which we need to know, especially with respect to protozoan. We have amoebiasis caused by entamoeba histolytica. Entamoeba histolytica. So we also have malaria caused by four different species. Let me say, for example, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium bovale, and Plasmodium malaria. So these are few protozoan diseases. Further, under communicable diseases, let me also give you examples of fungal diseases. The best example which I can give you is with respect to what I can say, epidermophyton, trichophyton and microsporum. Epidermophyton, microsporum and trichophyton. So, these fungi causes the, um, the ringworm. And other than this, we have so many other fungal diseases like cocodiomycosis, basidiomycosis. We have 
barber stitch, athlete stitch, and so on. When it is about helminth disorder, the worm disorders we have ascariasis caused by ascaris lumbricordus. We have Vicharia bancrofti and Vicharia malai, which causes. And Vicharia malai, which causes elephantiasis or lymphatic filariasis. In the same manner, there are so many other helminth disorders which we can definitely consider. But these are few examples which I can bring out here for communicable or infectious diseases. Moving ahead, my dear friends, let me tell you what are non-communicable or non-infectious diseases. See, these are the diseases which are not confined. In fact, sorry, which are conf uh, I mean um, uh, confined to a particular person and it does not spread. So, um, uh, the examples which I can say are deficiency disorders. We all know we have, say for example, protein deficiencies, quasiolkar, nutritional marasmus, fat deficiency like trinoderma, vitamin C deficiency we have scurvy, then vitamin D deficiency we have rickets, osteomalacia and so many other. Like this, you know, these are few and cancer, the uncontrolled cell division which results in benign and malignant tumors can also be considered under non-communicable or non-infectious disease. Allergies, the exaggerated immune response can also be included under non-infectious or non-communicable diseases. My dear friends, uh, let me also give you a few important aspects about congenital or hereditary diseases. So the diseases which uh, are inborn defects which are transmitted from the parents to the offsprings are genetic in nature, are congenital diseases and they are generally caused due to two important factors. One is genetic mutations and the second one is chromosomal aberrations. As we all know mutations basically means any sudden heritable change uh, that might be with respect to uh, the base pairing or that might be what I can say a friendship mutation also. Anyway, all these uh, aspects further we are going to study much in detail. And further, few examples if I want to give you chromosomal operations, addition or deletion of chromosomes may occur. Down syndrome, addition of autosomal chromosome causes uh, that particular disease. Turner syndrome, deletion of one sexual chromosome causes uh, uh, the that particular disease. We have, uh, say for example, sickle cell anemia caused due to change in single base pair. Um, and further, we also have hemophilia, uh, you know, which is a disease referred to as bleeder's disease, the royal disease. Uh, so, uh, due to the absence of uh, blood clotting factors, 8, 9, and all the, also 11, you know, generally caused due to mutation, is also included under hereditary diseases. Other diseases we know, my dear friends, we have color blindness, we have phenyl ketonuria, we have thalassemia, and so many other. So these are the important aspects uh, which I just wanted to bring in front of you pertaining to health and the type of diseases. Uh, please keep uh, you know updated uh, yourself uh, to watch the upcoming classes on the bacteria, virus and uh, all the other microbes. So thank you very much my dear friends.